Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It is Wednesday, March 31st, 2021. I am Andrew Hansen alongside Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach. And we've got a 10-gamer today, Coach, coming off a real solid night. It really was. It was it was a lot of fun last night because it was uh, classic sweat. You know, we had those two late games uh, on a four-game slate and a lot of weight on those two games. So we were trailing until the last like 10 minutes of the night. And then we made this huge push with some of our, our low owned guys, including your man, Mr. Bogdanovich, who went 11 plus X. So it was, it was an awesome finish to the night, cashed all over the place. Everybody's pretty fired up, man. So it was a good time. Yeah, that was great. Bogdanovich, like you said the other day, I, I am his agent and uh, we did, <laughs> we did uh, invite our members to play him. And under 5% owned at that $4,200 yes. price tag, and he just smashed. Uh, loved that. Could not believe how low owned he was, and he was the key you know, to, to winning uh, on FanDuel there. So lots of good stuff here. And 10-gamer today, Coach. I know Full, full slate here in the NBA. Five, only five teams involved in a back-to-back, though, and only two totals over 230. So a yeah. pretty balanced slate. Um, and we've got some Andre Drummond news coming. That'll be an interesting analysis here uh, towards the end of the slate. But we, of course, are going to start with the early games. You want to get us going with that Portland-Detroit game? I would love to. You know, these big slates, double-digit slates are my favorite. So I'm, I am fired up. All right, we've got the, the Portland Trailblazers against the Detroit Pistons. Right now, Portland is a seven-point favorite. The over-under is 222.5, so respectable. Um, uh, For Portland, we have Nazir Little out. And then we have, uh, for Detroit, we have a couple of questionable uh, questionable tag on Dumbuyu. We have a doubtful on three-point shooting Ellington. And then Smith Jr. and Magruder are out. So we're going to get a little bit of a shift in some of that rotation there uh once again like we have been lately it's the detroit games uh you know there's have you noticed there's a pocket of teams now the thunder detroit minnesota a few teams that it's like uh, they're out of it they're positioning themselves for the draft and you're getting to see a lot of different uh players like right now detroit has saban lee and frank jackson as the possible starting backcourt. And I can't remember the last time Detroit started the same one and two guard in a game, you know? No, they've been trying to to change it every single game. Uh, they're on a streak. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the only consistency there are the two guys that I think are in play, and that's Sadiq Bey and Jeremy Grant, because, uh, you know, they've shown some semblance of uh, – consistency especially with minutes and usage uh mason Plumley is always there but the problem with mason is you know i still see isaiah stewart you know grabbing some of those minutes and even though Plumley does is a good points per minute dfs guy for them uh it's you know me with the split position it just it drives me nuts so uh not probably the the, the greatest place to go there uh, Portland, I'll tell you, Portland's a dangerous team. I would not want to play them in the playoffs. I mean, their starting lineup, Lillard, McCollum, Norman Powell, stud. Covington's been a stud again now. It took him forever to get going. Now he's good. And then Nurkic and Canner sharing center. You know, and they have some guys off the bench that are pretty good too. So uh, they're always in play. And, and you know, tonight is is no different. We've got you know, two two things though. The problem is the pace isn't isn't the greatest in this game, uh, twenty one and twenty three. But the defense is bad. We know Portland has just been atrocious. They're twenty ninth now, and Detroit is sixteenth. So, how do we want to approach this slate? You know, I've I've been a big Saban Lee fan, waiting for him to get the majority of minutes at point. And I could spend the next 15 minutes talking about who he's played behind this year. They've traded some of them. They've picked some up. They've traded some other ones. And he's always backing up. But, you know, if he gets a full run, 
you know, you, he is the sneakiest play, really low owned, going against a, a poor defensive backcourt of Portland. So Saban Lee, uh, I, I have a little interest. Um, Frank Jackson's not the worst play in the world if you you know in a GPP. And then, like I said, Bay and Grant, uh, you know, have some some interest for me. Will this game stay close becomes the big question, Andrew, because if it does, you know, Dame is playing Super Bowl and CJ's playing Super Bowl. So, you know, that quandary of do you play one of them? Do you play both of them? You know, that's the big question. Now, we do have some phenomenal buy-ups uh, down uh, stream here in these games. So, you know, uh, Dame is on my radar rather than CJ, but not. I haven't made the decision to pull the trigger there. Um, Norman Powell always gets a look for me, but I need his price to to go down. It, it's still up from when he was crushing it in Toronto, and now being like the third banana there, it's you know even though he's really good and he can get hot, and eight nine x is always in play for him. His usage in minutes and shots are all down since he left the Raptors. So uh, hopefully within the next week, that price goes down to where it needs to be. Um, you know, Covington, Covington Grant is going to be a nice matchup. It almost makes me afraid to play either one because they both can defend and they're both solid. Uh, so a little, little concerned there. And then the Nurkic and uh, split in time with Canner. Nurkic is the man. He's going to get the majority of the minutes. It's just he's still ramping up. So, you know, I, I may go uh, one off on each side. If I do pull a trigger on Lillard, I'd love to be able to come back on the other side with like a Lee and a Bay. But I like this game. First off, the slate early game, I don't think it's going to get as much attention as it deserves because the pace is a little shaky. But I think there's potential there. What do you think? I like the potential <clears throat> on the Detroit side with uh, those guys out, the guards, because it really yeah. does, it does open up the opportunity for guys like Saban Lee. So if he's starting, he's definitely in consideration for me. Diallo, yeah. Diallo uh, really made a big in- impact in that last game. Double-double yeah. off the bench, 27 minutes. He's a little pricey on FanDuel, but I kind of like his price on DraftKings. So he's he's a possibility for me. And with the bigs, I do like Isaiah Stewart here. Because, mm. like you said, the the trend for uh, Plumley is not good with these minutes. They're really taking a look at Stewart. He got 30 minutes yeah. last game, and yeah. he's going to have that better matchup off the bench against Cantor. So I, I like Stewart here as a, as a possibility, and I'm not really interested in in uh, the Portland guys. I just don't like mm. the fact that CJ's back and and taking a, a bunch of shots. Uh, yeah. You mentioned Powell's high price. Uh, I just don't like the the price tags for Dame and CJ with them both out there. In uh, you know, not a great pace up game. And on this slate, like you said, the, I, I'd rather pay up for other stars down the down the road. So it's really most likely a, a one off value play for Detroit for me against that bad Portland defense, and then continue on. I'm with you. The only thing that'll be enticing is when you can get Dame at that low ownership, there's always that chance, you know, it's a Dame time kind of game. So I'm with you, though. I, I mean, it's it's becoming Portland. I think we said on the last pod, Portland is now a dangerous team, but hurts D- DFS wise a bit. That's for sure. Exactly. One other note here. This is a front end of the back to back for Detroit, which is right. the other thing that scares me a little bit. You know, do all these guys kind of split minutes? Uh, some of their price tags make it so that they could still hit value, but that's one one last thing to keep in mind for for game one. You know, it, it's the other thing I want to mention here too because it's so important, and it had a big reason why we won last night. You know, these teams that have given up and are playing young guys, they're they're blowout proof. A lot of those Orlando guys, the young ones, they played till the end. It didn't matter what the the score was. They're trying to get continuity for a bunch of these young guys. And I think Detroit's, you're going to see a lot of that too. You know, even if they're down 25 or whatever the case may be, I think the Lees and the Diallos and the Stewarts, they want to let these guys get minutes on the floor together. And and that's going to be a big edge for people because it just 
destroys you when your guys don't play that fourth quarter. And if you can play guys that are still in the starting lineup or first off the bench that are, uh, you know, really a blowout proof monster edge. Game two, the other seven o'clock tip. It's Miami, Indiana. Low total here, 216 and a half. Miami favored by one and a half. We've got the slow yeah. pace of Miami, their great defense. Uh, and Indiana, uh, also top 12 defensively. Their pace is up to ninth. That's noteworthy. That's really what contributed to that huge scoring game against Washington. Obviously, Washington, number one pace in the NBA. But keep an eye on Indiana with the top 10 pace. Um, in this one, though, we've got a front end of a back-to-back for Miami. The usual question marks with those guards. None is, is questionable. And then Oladipo and Akpala are still out. So on the Miami side, the last game, Dragic started and played 24 minutes. Hero came off the bench, played 34 minutes, got up 17 shots. I, I like Hero here as a possibility. He's probably my favorite potential Miami play because it's not going to be a high-scoring game, but he's still in the 5K range on both sites, and he's going to run that second unit. Butler would be a GPP option, potentially. Um, you know, Not in love with that price tag on this slate. With Indiana, we have Lamb and McDermott both questionable. So yeah. if they're both out, you start to think a little bit more about some of these guys, but it is such a tough matchup slower pace game that I'm probably not going to go to any of the key guys here. Uh, you know, you all know the drill now with Holiday. He's still 3,800 on FanDuel, so you could look there, especially if Lamb and McDermott are out. But this is like a, a one-off mid-tier guy, potentially, or a pass for me. Yeah, this this will be my speed game. I mean, this is a game I want to watch. I usually have a couple of these a week, sort of one of my favorite games on the slate to watch but least favored to roster. Uh, you know, I don't trust the, the huge rotation with Miami. When Butler and, Auto, and Autobio are back, but they still have all these other guys like Hero, Duncan Robinson, Trevor Ariza, who's playing a much bigger role. You know, you, there's just a lot to go around there. They've really formulated into a real uh, playoff squad, as has Indiana. They've both taken on good players, you know, the additions, with Lavert and everybody. And I'll tell you the last few games, the minutes he's gotten, Edmund Sumner is a player. That kid, keep an eye on him. But that's just another guy in that rotation of everybody sharing the ball. You know, Sabonis will get ownership because he's coming off a monster game, but, you know, he has to face a Reza defense who's still, uh, you know, an elite defender. And then, you know, Bam and, and Butler are in there also. So I love I love this game as far as competitive and where these teams are going. I don't even want a one-off from this game. I don't feel comfortable with anybody, and I'm ready to move on. We got a big matchup coming up here. The teams in our backyards facing Uh-oh. off in Boston. Coach versus Andrew, here right we here. Go. It is the Dallas Mavericks 24 and 21, and the Boston Celtics 23 and 24. If you notice, I wanted to mention the oh, records. Oh, yeah, you, had to, on me- this you one. had to mention those records, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as uh, pace goes, nothing to write home about 24 uh, and 19. And here's the shame. We both have to hang our heads here. What the hell's going on? Dallas 25th defensively and Boston 22nd. So from a, our team's perspective, you don't expect that kind of defense but there's lots of def- uh, of offense that we have to really get excited about here. We do know that uh, Thompson remains out, uh, and Brown, which is huge news, is questionable for Boston. And for Dallas, really any the only one of semblance in the rotation that's out is Cauley Stein. So here we go. This, this is going to be a really interesting game. You know, do you spend up for Luka in this game? I think that you know, the potential is there. I mean, you're only on a slate like this, you're only going to get one guy to pay up for, in my opinion, to make your roster work. You know, Luca could be the guy. He missed that one game with back spasms and he came back. Um, you know, I, I'm i not sure. I'm on the fence. 
not convinced that this is the perfect matchup for him. If Jalen Brown plays, I mean, he helps Boston's defense. I think they take a notch back when he's out. Um, but I do think this will be a competitive game. Uh, um, you've got Porzingis playing good, good basketball, but you know, can Boston defend him with a little bit undersized, uh, Williams at center? Um, I, you know, Williams is strong. He's, uh, you know, he's going to be able to body him, but he's got to really come out and play him. He'll Porzingis is, you know, pulls up at the at the logo at times to take threes so really you know my favorite maverick is believe it or not is porzingis and i know i've been on his back but uh he seems to be playing well he seems to be very healthy he sat the game before last out they they're not on a back-to-back from yesterday so they should be fresh uh so porzingis is in consideration he's still not that elite price so you can get him slightly on the mid tier still. And then uh, on the Boston side, you know, you always have to consider Tatum when Brown is out. It's just one of those. We talk about that all the time. Uh, That's one of my favorite things to go after is when you have two studs, one of them's out, you know, just have to push yourself to do it and play a guy and spend the money because nine times out of 10, it works out. It really does. And I think this that's the situation here. Um, you know, Kemba, Smart, those guys are going to all pitch in. But the bottom line is they still run all their big shots through Brown and Tatum. Um, so Tatum is in consideration uh, for me here. The guy I like the best is Williams, though. I just don't think Dallas has an answer for him. Boban is too slow and big. Porzingis is a bad defender. Uh, the guy that might have been able to, you know, take – 15, 18 minutes against him would have been Cauley Stein because he's a little more mobile, but he's out. So, you know, I, I'm going Williams. I, I really believe in in bigs against Dallas Steel still. And then uh, Brown and Porzingis are both, or I'm sorry, Tatum and Porzingis are both in play. So you say, wow, coach, you're spending all your money in this game. And, you know, the the question is, is the line going to be, does it make sense? Does Vegas believe in you? And I'm, I'm going to get, I want to get an updated line for you here. I'm going to click on it real quick because I lost my screen for that. Because a lot of these lines in the morning like this adjust quite a bit. So right now, this is the fun part. You know, it's, it's Dallas minus one, which doesn't that seem a little surprising to you that Boston's a dog at home? Well, not with Jalen Brown questionable. Okay, that's true. And the over-under here is 224.5, so it's respectable. Uh, You know, normally you wouldn't think to target a game like this, but this is my target game, uh, and it has nothing to do with the fact that I want to beat Andrew's team to a pulp. (laughs) But uh, no, it's just, hey— I'll tell you one thing you'll never have to worry about with me, and I might as well say this right now for new listeners and members. If you ever favor your own team or your or the late game or the national TV game, all of those things are monster fish moves. So you've got to approach you know, every game on every slate with complete neutrality, not have any, any predisposed thoughts whatsoever. And I don't have them in this game. I really don't. Uh, but I really like uh, this game. I think it's got the potential to be an up and down game, even though they both play a little slow. I think you're going to see a little pace plus here, and and I'm going to be all over it. I think I'll come out of here with at least three guys and quite a bit of exposure and the most salary that I'll spend on a game all day. So a little surprising, huh? You know, I couldn't agree with you more, especially on the new, really? the neutrality piece. I think it's okay. ultra important. I don't care what team a guy plays for, what his name is, how tall he is. All I care about is his price, the game environment, and how does it work together on that slate. I mean, when I wake up in the morning, I don't have a plan for, oh, this. Oh, I want to play my Celtics, or I want to, you know, none of that. It's right. all about yeah. evaluating the matchups, and then looking at the price tags in the end. 
So that's yeah. that's a huge piece of advice that we 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 should really continue to harp on for the new listeners because we do have listeners who are new to DFS. We so do. So we're glad to have you here, and definitely reach out to us with any specific questions on on strategy. Um, and you know, just time. to elaborate on that, Andrew, we don't use optimizers. We hand build everything. If if you're new to us, and secondly. We go into this and organically build it. We don't watch any other shows, listen to this, look at stuff. We don't. I don't even look at the times of the games. We just completely take uh, a straight focus. Now, as the day goes on, once we've gone through our original build, reserved our lineups with the initial uh, builds that we have, I will make sure because you need, to, you have to, you have to look at some ownership, some trends in the. In, you know, in the industry and things are going on. So we'll do that during the day. But when you're getting this podcast every day, you are getting Andrew and I's pure look at these games, how the game script is going to go and how all that will fall into place. And that really has been a secret to our success in this from the very beginning. Yeah. And the other thing on you mentioned the game times, we don't look at the game times in terms of, oh, I want to play the early guys or I want to play the late guys or I want to play the guys on national TV. The only reason we look at the game times is because we have to know who are we going to pivot to. And right. where, are exactly. the, where are the question marks on the slate? Are they at the end? So do we want to gamble with playing a questionable guy late in the slate? If so, we obviously have <clears throat> a plan in place for a pivot. But that that's the reason to look at game times is for uh, 100%. pivots. And la- la- that's what won it for us last night. We didn't even mention that at the beginning. We knew that the Clippers news was wacky. We didn't know if George was going to sit or maybe Kawhi on a back-to-back, or any of the other guys. So what happened in the industry is a lot of people got stuck because the guy that ended up out was Marcus Morris. And a lot of people couldn't make any pivots, or they'd have to go way down. But we kept a 2v2 switch, and were able to maneuver. And and the, one of the guys that we dumped when we made that two-man switch was Bacon, and he had a bad game. The guys we plugged in there both were fire symbols on DraftKings, and that's the key. So you'll see when we post our lineups, all of that goes into consideration throughout the day, whether we're going to be rostering holder spots, making pivots, and that's massively important. And, and last night was a perfect example of it. Absolutely. So um, we might set a record here for the longest analysis of one game since we took this detour <laughs> talking strategy but it's appropriate because the only thing about this game that i don't like is the pace 24th and 19th but every other variable variable that we like we have it here both bad defenses both good offenses and this 224 and a half total i think is a little bit low if i'm gonna i do too that one i I bet the over you know these guys just are going to come down and score at will against teams that can't defend and we've got ultra skilled offensive players so I, I'm, I'm looking at Luca and Porzingis like you, uh, and I'm probably going to focus on those two studs if I'm going to play a Maverick. And then on the Boston side, Tatum certainly in play with Brown potentially out. I also like Robert Williams. And we have to at least mention Evan Fournier. What a disastrous uh, oh my beginning gosh. to his Celtics career. 0 for 10. He got the 33 minutes that we wanted. Uh, 0 for 10. Not good. Uh, how does he rebound here? That'll be interesting to watch. He's, you know, still a little pricey if he's not starting. Um, on ten game slate, I, I probably won't go here, but uh, that'll be a key thing to watch is how he continues to fit in. Does he get comfortable playing in Boston as a Celtic? I do have a prediction for you. What's that? He'll have a better game. Hey, you can't have, can't be worse. Can't be worse. Impossible. Yeah. It was epically bad. <laughs> All right, well, uh, this might be a good time to invite folks to join us as a member. Uh, you know, this type of strategy is the key to what we do. Like Coach said, we don't use the optimizer. We hand build, and that allows us to adjust on the fly and help members make pivots uh, with our full lineups that we give out on FanDuel and Yahoo and then the Coach's Clipboard on DraftKings. So jump in with us tonight if you'd like to try us out here with our number one sport, NBA. And whatever package you get, you'll have access to all of our other sports whether it's the three-day pass, week, month, uh, break up the the year membership, uh, we've got all the options for you. DFSCoachTalk.com, you sign up there. Or if you want to uh, join through BetUS, we still have the tremendous offer. BetUS.com.pa, 149. Use the promo code COACHTALK, all one word, 
And then after you sign up, let us know on Twitter that you've done that, at DFS Coach Talk, and we'll get you into our Discord with an email. We give out the initial lineups about 20 minutes before lock. All right, Coach. And tomorrow is the opening day of MLB. That's right. Spring is here. Now it is. Now, we're going to pick up the pace here with Houston and Brooklyn, who yes. are, are pace-up teams. Houston still fifth in the NBA, Brooklyn 13th. And this yep. is one of our 230 games, 232. Brooklyn favored by 14, though. Do they yeah. blow them out? How many minutes do these guys play? It is a front end of a back-to-back for Brooklyn, which is very important in my mind. And we've got big injury news with Houston. We've got Christian Wood, probable to get back in the lineup, and Olenek has been smashing in his absence. And yep. then House is probable to get back out there. Meanwhile, John Wall, questionable. The guy who just, you know, every other game almost, he sits. So yeah. big, big news there. It is a 7.30 tip, so there's a chance we'll have this news before the slate locks. And it is going to be important for me. Uh, if if Wood is out, Olenek is still in play for me, especially on DraftKings where he can play two centers. Porter Jr., his price has come down a little bit. He could be in an awesome spot here against Brooklyn. Pace, A good pace game, Brooklyn's terrible defense. And this is uh, back to where you get excited. You know, 6,000 DraftKings, 5,500 FanDuel for Porter Jr. He could be be running the show if Wood and Wall are out. So he's a a key guy to look at on this slate. Sterling Brown will also be in play for me if Wall is out and he starts. He's under 5K on both sites. Jay Sean Tate is playable for me as probably the third option. Uh, And then DJ Augustine off the bench. If Wall is out, uh, DJ's been playing well there, um, running the the second unit. So he would be a, a, a way to get exposure to this game, lower ownership, uh, and maybe he benefits if, if there's a blowout. On the Brooklyn side, it's probably Harden or pass for me here. If, if we think it might stay close, Harden absolutely destroyed Houston last time out, and I do think it mattered that he was playing his former team. And yeah. yes, this one's in Brooklyn, but I think he could, you know, just absolutely crush again. He's been over 70 fantasy points the last couple of games, and that's what he was over against Houston. So it, it's either pay up for him or pass for me on Brooklyn. I don't want any of the uh, peripheral guys, and I'm not going to go to Kyrie Irving tonight. Yeah, you know, what, this will be a big key on the slate for me, Andrew, because you know, my increased ownership in that Dallas Boston game is going to be higher, quite a bit higher than the industry. And without question, my lack of ownership in this Houston Brooklyn game is going to be way below, uh, you know, the industry uh, numbers. Cause I think this game will get a lot of attention. You know, a lot of people are going to just buy into, you know, that narrative with Harden again, since he smashed him the first time. I'm not crazy about this game in the fact that you have to pay so much money for the guys that would smash it, and it definitely has blowout potential. Um, Really, it comes down to this. If Wall sits, then I will consider Porter uh, and a slight consideration for Wood because I think those two guys would have a really good chance to put up some numbers. But, you know, for Brooklyn, I do not do not want my one huge pay-up guy to be hardened in a game that should get out of hand. And the luster was off of that. He got to go back to Houston, smash him, sort of, you know, that's it's sort of over and done with. You know, guys like Porter and, and some of these folks, you know, Wood doesn't have that much – you know, memories with Harden there. So I don't just don't think that's going to be as big of a deal anymore. And Kyrie too expensive, but going to get, you know, his chunk of usage and the rest of the guys, they, they're doing a lot of rotation now of, of these guys being back. So uh, not crazy about this game. I know it sounds nuts, but I think that it blows out. I think you're going to see a lot of guys contribute and uh, just waiting on the wall news now that Porter is uh, decently priced. So could be a one-off on on one side or the other. Or, you know, I, I actually like the Houston side a slight bit better uh, potentially here. But this will be key. I need to get past this game without some kind of insanity from Harden and Irving. But I, I, I still think that, that this game uh, is going to disappoint some people. 
Yeah, that's DFS for you. We like the side of the team that's 13 and 33. Better Makes than no the sense, side that's 32 and 15. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. All right, take All us right. take us to Memphis. The Jazz are going to come in there and deal with Memphis without Donovan Mitchell. I know that that is the news of news here. So where does all that usage, where does all the clutch play go to? Uh, you know, some people immediately are going to go to Ingles and Clarkson. You know, I, I'm not sure. I think it gets more shots for Conley and Bogdanovich. And Utah is so crafty. They do spread it around in, the, in a good way as far as, you know, who has to step up. Uh, and get it done on any given night and you know it great for jet the jazz but bad for us but uh with mitchell out utah's only a five point favorite which i thought was interesting because that's lower than normal but it goes to show you the impact of a donovan mitchell and it's a 227 number so that's you know that's fair it's a respectable number uh you know it certainly creates some some uh interest uh, Winslow is out, by the way, for Memphis, and uh, Grayson Allen is questionable. Um, you know, there, there's multiple ways you can look at this game. Will it stay close the way it's uh, the it's anticipated to stay close? If it does, I think Mike Conley is a really good play here. Uh, I, th- I think Bogdanovich is a really good play because you can get those guys at that mid to lower mid uh you know, uh, rostering salary wise, and it helps everything else fit. And I'm telling you that usage, although looking it up, gets spread around quite a bit. Um, all of those guys are going to benefit, um, including Jordan Clarkson off the bench. But for me, my initial targets here are Conley and Bogdanovich, which I think, you know, bogeys, the, the other bogey came through for us last night. So why not uh, this bogey this night? And they're both. They both don't get any respect, and they both can shoot the lights uh, out on on any uh, given night. So, uh, some interest there. It's hard to to target guys against Utah because they're stout defense. But uh, you know, do you do you look at a Dylan Brooks or a Joe Val? You know, I don't know. I mean, none of those guys excite me here uh, against a, a good Utah defense, and. Uh, you know, they've had some games recently where, you know, they've sort of shared who's getting the most shots. Uh, you know, slow mos gets his stuff done, but I'm not going to go Memphis wise and dig for a diamond. Uh, I think I'm going to just go and take some of those uh, what I consider mid-level value plays with Mitchell being out on the Utah side. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't want to pay uh, for anybody on Memphis. I'm going to avoid that side and look at the Utah uh, increased opportunities here. I, I tend more to look at here Ingles and Clarkson over Conley and Bogdanovich. Ingles is a, the type of guy who, as a starter with somebody out like Conley or Mitchell, he has shown he can get 50 fantasy points. He just did it I recently. Know. He might also yeah. give you 25, but I, I like Ingles here. I like Clarkson. Uh, so those those are the guys I'm looking at, but uh, definitely a good opportunity here for some value f- for Utah. All right, second half of the slate, Coach. We have another 8 o'clock game. It's New York in Minnesota. Interesting. Yeah, 218 and a half total. The Knicks, the traveling Knicks here, are favored by four with their 30th pace. Big contrast here. Minnesota third in the NBA in pace. And we flip-flop the defenses. New York, excellent. Minnesota, terrible. And they're both bad offensively in terms of efficiency. So we're looking at a low-scoring game here with New York's great defense and slow pace. And then injury-wise, we have Derrick Rose questionable. If he sits, you know, you, you kind of get a little more interested in, in one of these guards here against Minnesota's bad defense. Uh, but Burks is, is he's priced up now. He's at least 6000 on both sites. R.J. Barrett yeah. is at least 7000 on both sites. He's coming off of a dud. Alfred Payton has had four straight games of 21 minutes or less coming back from that injury, and he just hasn't gotten big minutes like he has at other times during the season. And it's it's a quandary because he's ultra-low priced in a great game environment, but 
do you trust him to finally get more minutes? I don't know if I can on this slate, even though he's ultra cheap. So right. you, I might roll the dice if I was going to play a New York guard on quickly off the bench. Uh, you know, if Derrick Rose is out, he should get more of an opportunity. But this not it's still not a place that I'm thrilled about here on this slate. The only price tag I kind of like really with the Knicks is Nerlens Noel on DraftKings. He's 4900 and yeah. he got 30 minutes last game with Mitchell Robinson out now for an extended period of time. We know that Cad is not a strong defender. So Noel is in play for me. On the Minnesota side, not really liking the the prices here for the studs in this tough matchup. Got to mention Jaden McDaniels. He absolutely smashed last game. Over, he sure did. Over 10x. He had five stocks, over 40 fantasy points. And I would mentioned him as a, a FanDuel GPP play. I'm disappointed we didn't put him out there. But we did have another... Uh, value power for that slate. I think it was Hartenstein who also smashed. So uh, that yeah. didn't that didn't end up really hurting us. Um, you know, so he's still in play at a 4K price tag. Um, he's playable, but not a must play for me. So this one, you know, could be Noel, or you know, because of the the center position there, it, it could be a pass. Yeah, I mean, this this game is just one of those things that just doesn't fit for me. I mean, you've got Minnesota guys that are priced up now. I mean, they really hit these guys hard, priced them up for some reason. And they're going against this this stifling Knicks defense that slows slows it down. So that that's not great. But then, you know, you've got the Knicks who you think, okay, this could be a smash spot. You know, Minnesota's terrible on D. And they play fast. Okay, let's let's fire up some Knicks, but not so fast because I, I absolutely hate this Knicks backcourt situation. It's so frustrating. I mean, Rose may play. You got Elf that's going to get minutes. Bullock's going to get minutes. Quickly's going to get minutes. Um, you know, my favorite guy Burks is going to get minutes. But those are a lot of minutes to go around, and that does not scream, you know, play me uh, on, on DFS. So. With six guard rotation, basically, if Rose is in, it's just way too much to unpack for me to to count on anybody to smash value. R.J. Barrett is now, I think they priced him out of consideration for me because he does throw duds up like the last game. And when he does get to 45, that used to be like awesome. He, he smashed for us because he was only 4,800 or whatever, but... Now that he's priced like seven grand and up, I I just can't go there. Um, you know, the the one pay up guy that I'm interested in is Julius, just because he's just playing such great ball and he's gonna get the extra minutes. You know, I definitely am considering his price is is really annoying here, but you know, I I'm leaning to him to be one of my my main pay-up guys right now. And Nerlens Noel is my favorite play out of this game. He is going to get a ton of minutes because he is the guy that needs to guard Towns. Uh, Taj Gibson's too small. We know Mitch is out with the broken hand. So it's no no. Uh, I think Noel plays 32 to 35 minutes. And, you know, Minnesota is not a good interior defend defensive team and with his price being what it is it really helps now i may not do that on FanDuel because the one center deal but on DraftKings and yahoo without question i'll be going two centers tonight with noel taking one of those spots excellent all right we move on do we have uh, toronto and oklahoma city correct yes sir all right we've got um the Raptors, who are a real quandary lately, they are a head scratcher on what their strategy is. I mean, they're 11 games under 500. I've read that there's the potential they may shut Lowry down for the season at some point, and he's a free agent at the. I, I mean, I don't know what they're doing. I can't believe they didn't trade him. None of it makes any sense. It just muddies the waters of trying to figure out DFS. And then, as we talked with the Thunder. You know, they want to see these young guys. They want to see who can play together. Um, but guess guess who I'm going to put in my recommendation pool for the very first time? He snuck in 
last weekend to my clipboard, but it's Poku. Can wow. you believe it? How about that? I know. It's a transformation. It goes to show you an old dog like me <laughs> can be transformed when I see somebody earn it. You know, the last game I watched him play, I mean, the, the dude's 19. He's the youngest play, He was the youngest player in the draft. He just, those that first dozen games, he looked terrified. He was shooting off balance. There was just no rhyme or reason to it. I couldn't understand why they were playing him. They sent him down to the G League for a couple of weeks. He just crushed it in the G League. Came back a completely different kid. Like, I belong here, and I don't want to go back to the G League. And he's playing great. So oh, I, I see I what mean, it is. He, he scores 21 against your Mavericks, and all of a sudden there's some <laughs> new respect for Poku. No, you know, it's I, I've, I've been ten, trending that way. It wasn't just the Mavs game, but, I, you know, I just the body language of him out there was so much better. So I'm not saying he's a must play or anything like that, but his price is still good. He's getting monster minutes. I like the matchup, and it just makes sense there. But anyway, I, I got off. I just was so, uh, so stunned that I'm actually uh, on the Poku bandwagon now that I, I couldn't believe it. But I, I want to mention uh, Watson, Bembry, and McCaw still remain out for Toronto. Bembry's the only guy that's been in the rotation. And the Moose is not on the loose. Uh, that's for Lanny and our man J.P. Wild. So no Muscala uh, tonight. We've got the 11th and 12th rated pace so that's solid 18th and 14th defense a little bit below normal uh okc has been drifting down but you know since we have this shea injury and he's going to be out for quite a while um and this mystery retirement from horford Mm -hmm. it has changed the complexion here and and i think both sides here have potential rosterable spots at at good prices this is going to be like going to the dollar store for DFS. I think you can get some really quality players, and I'm going to mention them all because they're all in my pool, and I'm sifting through who I want to play. But uh, Teo Maladon, Svi Mikhailuk, Poku, and Moses Brown, those guys are all going to get minutes. I think they're all potentially solid. And, you know, against a Toronto team that, has been giving up bunches of points lately. Um, I think they make perfect sense. Uh, probably won't play more than two Thunder, but they could be the two value pay, plays that are key, the key to my slate. As far as Toronto goes, uh, you know, Van Vliet had a great game. Um, if Lowry and Van Vliet are playing like I expect, I think there'll be some sharing of uh, potential sharing of. DFS points there. Gary Trent's just trying to fit in and, and get into that mold. His price is still good, but uh, not you know riskier play. Good GPP play if he gets hot. Um, you know the guy that's been really another guy that I never used to play is OG Ananobi. He's he looks better. I mean he came back from that injury. He looks healthy. I think they rest him long enough. I mean, he's going to get you a little bit of everything. He can score some, hit a few threes, but he's always going to get steals, sneak a block or two in, a lot of rebounds. And he seems to, you know, when the ball's going up and when Baines and Boucher are not in there and Toronto's been going small a lot, uh, he's the guy that comes roaring in there and, you know, scoops the rebound a la, you know, guys like uh, Westbrook and and Luca and those those guard to forward guys that just come in and act like the big center and and grab some of the extra board. So his price is still really good. And I think his upside is really good. And, you know, the other thing with Oklahoma city that I'll mention that why their games now are a little bit better on both sides is Dort's in concussion protocol. So he usually slows it down a little bit for them. He's the defensive stopper on and on, and that's gone as well. So, I think, you know, this game has the potential to be sneaky, a little more higher higher scoring than people are going to expect. Um, don't want to spend the giant money here. I don't think you have to with the Lowry's and Van Vliet's and Siakam's. But I think there's mucho, mucho value with all those guys that I said. And, you know, I'd be happy to come out, 
with two OKC, one Toronto, uh, and that allows me for the couple of buy-ups to get the, the two somewhat studs that I'm looking for. Yeah, I hear where you're coming from there. Uh, on that OKC side, the guys you mentioned I think would be the ones to consider. I would probably lean towards Svi as a starter. I like his price. Uh, Moses Brown's price is going up a little bit. Uh, so pro- most likely a one-off would be Svi for me. And then on the Toronto side, you know, I kind of like how uh, Siakam has been playing in general. Didn't get big minutes in the last one. Uh, but could be a tough matchup with Moses Brown's length if they both start at center. Uh, so, and OG is the kind of guy who's always in play for me, but I, I don't seem to get him right. And I you know, don't like his in- inconsistency where he can give you 15 fantasy points or 40. Uh, He's so risky. He, he is a little bit risky. So this is probably a, a really cheap one-off for me or a pass. Interesting. Okay. All right, the next one here, a little bit more exciting from my perspective, Sacramento and San Antonio. The other yeah. 230 game, just over, 230 and a half. San Antonio favored by two and a half. This is a rematch from Monday. We had a high-scoring game, Sacramento, 132 to 115. We We've did. got the solid paces here. Sacramento's awful defense, their 30th. And, you know, Sacramento's good offense, their ninth. So they're, they're the one of the ideal teams for us, like Brooklyn. They push it, they score, and they don't defend. So we yeah. we like to roster guys in the Sacramento games. And Fox was a target for me last game. He was solid. He's really expensive, though, now, 10K on FanDuel. I think I am more likely yeah. to go to Luka here. Um, and then Halliburton, you were on him last game. He played really well in this matchup. Got double-digit assists. Yeah. Uh, and he's, he's at a much better price. So I'll probably more likely go to him over Fox on this slate to get exposure to this game. Don't think I'll go anywhere else, most likely, with Sacramento. On the San Antonio side, this is a front end of a back-to-back. So, a siren, alert, be cautious. It's the Spurs on the front end of a back-to-back. You know, it, despite the fact that it's such a great game environment. That's the, the tough analysis here in this one. And yeah. I did also play DeJounte Murray in that last slate. He did well. Three three games in a row. He's in a nice groove. Ideal matchup. He's playable for me. DeRozan didn't quite do it, but, uh, you know, I'd be fine with that play. And Pirtle, I'm a little disappointed because I mentioned Pirtle. I love the matchup. Uh, centers against Sacramento is a good place to right. go. And, and he really he really smashed 17 and 11, got over 30 minutes. I didn't play him on that slate. We'll see if I can get him in here somewhere. It's tough with, with the center position on this big of a slate, but uh, the guys I'd be most likely to play in this game would be Halliburton, DeJounte Murray, and Pearl. Yeah, you know, this was the key game for me a couple of days ago. I had uh, four people from this game, and they and it worked out. They, they did terrific, but the pricing's changed a little bit. Things are a little bit different. Uh, this is a, a completely different slate. And it just goes to show you, you know, on one night from the other, uh, you would think with the same two teams, you'd be on the same guys. But the price ranges and who else is available, it changes everything. So, you know, right now, Fox is just uh, priced out of the market to me. Um, Halliburton, you know, was going against a little bit uh, limited Spurs guards. There were some things going on in this last game that that. Uh, create a little bit less rotation on the Spurs side. So I liked him better in that game. Um, You know, I really am not crazy about the Sacramento side because Fox being uh, overpriced, I think he can still do very well. And, you know, you you hit the nail on the head. It's pop against a team that they really should beat. And it's against, it's the first night of a back-to-back. He's got a lot of his weapons available. And he's liable to do a little bit of anything. So, again, you know, this game with the number that it has is going to get quite a bit of ownership. Uh, The only guy that, you know, I would flirt with trying to get in my lineup would be DeMar DeRozan. He'd be my target here. His price is a little rough, though. Um, And but really, I know it's it sounds silly. And, you know, I'm loving this slate, though. I'll just tell you right now, because. 
the games that I'm targeting are games that I think are going to be under-owned, and the games that I'm fading I think are going to be grossly over-owned. And that's all the edge that I need. That's the variance that I think is is going to take take stuff down or hopefully take stuff down. So, the, you know, I'm not going to be real active in this game. Uh, if I can get DeRozan in there, I will. But I just don't like how the rest of it lays out, even being a guy that played – four people uh, from this game two days ago. Coach, last thing here. You mentioned the guards. Lonnie Walker is probable to get back in the lineup. Trey Lyles right. is, is out, and then Hassan Whiteside is questionable. Just wanted to add that and before you take us to L.A. Yeah, and Walker, you know, muddies that even more with that group. So, all right, we go to L.A., and Mr. Andre Drummond, uh, he has not been added to the DraftKings roster yet. I'm sure he will be throughout today. Uh, He may already have been as we're doing this podcast. He's 5,200 on FanDuel, which puts him right in play. Now, you know, I will spend the day as normal scouring everywhere. Uh, I need to see, is Drummond, we know he's starting, that was announced. Is he going to be able to just go out there and play? Is he in great shape and he play 30 minutes, go for it, you're our center? Or is this going to be a progression? He gets 15 to 18 minutes and they build it up. We need that news because at 5,200, he plays 30 minutes. 20 and 20 is always a possibility for this guy. Why there weren't more teams just going berserk to try to get him, I don't understand. Just one of those oddities to me. But if he's just going to build up and we hear that, you know, he's not going to be pushed on minutes, he's an easy pass. So that is all news relevant. Um the two guys that remain out for Milwaukee are P.J. Tucker and Bobby Portis, which uh, brings Giannis's little brother into play a little bit as a backup. Um, you know, you, a lot of ways to look at this game. you got uh, the fourth fastest pace in Milwaukee, so it's a nice pace up for the Lakers. Lakers are 17th, but you've got two top nine defenses. Milwaukee ninth. And getting better now that they've had Holiday back for a stretch here. Lakers somehow still hanging on to number one. We're expecting that to drop a a few spots at any time. So, yeah, they're not the number one defense that they had been without their their stars missing. But they're still good. And, you know, this game is going to get a lot of attention, a lot of TV watching, uh, a lot of excitement in that sense. But... You know, I'm just not doing somersaults here. I'm not going to choose to uh, go up to Giannis in this matchup because of the price. You know, I mentioned the few guys that I'm going to go to. Giannis is always a great play. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, you got to be picky on these 10-game slates where you're paying up. So uh, not going to go there. You know, you can always go one flight below, which, you know, generally a lot of people, when they don't roster Giannis, they'll they'll roster Middleton. But that's not a layup anymore because now the the guy that's really scored the second most fantasy points for them in the last two weeks is Holiday. He's been playing lights out. Something sparked him into another level, uh, really, since the All-Star break. He's just ramped it up, maybe just because he's healthy uh, for the first time. But... You know, uh, you know, Holiday certainly in consideration here for me. You know, is this game going to stay close though? And you know, with you know, LA just looking like doggy doo doo since the the big guys went out. You know, it, it makes me a little concerned that uh, that it won't stay close because there's no question that Milwaukee is a much better team. And if you do get a blowout here. Uh, you're going to lose monster minutes for guys that need those minutes to make value. I mean, it's sitting at nine right now. I could drift to 10, and the 222 number is okay. But, uh, yeah, I, I think Milwaukee may smack them around a little bit, and that that lessens everybody uh, for me uh, somewhat. I don't know the initial impact Drummond will have. We need to know those minutes, but... On the L.A. side, you know, the other opportunities there, uh, you know, Schroeder's not going to be in play for me because of holiday defense. Uh, you know, Kuzma and Middleton, I would consider possibly both. But Kuzma, 
he's, you know, like one of those guys we talk about all the time. He can get your 40 or 12 or, you know, it's just all over the board. Uh, Morris will probably be back after sitting the one game. I think they wanted to get him freshened up to try to harass Giannis a little bit. Uh, so, you know, I really am not crazy about this game. Uh, to, you know, I, I'll i consider Holiday if I can afford him, but his price has gone up. And then uh, just sort of wait for the Drummond news. But other than that, not that appealing of a game for me. Yeah, right now I'm planning to fade it completely, other than maybe Drummond uh, on FanDuel if we get some clarity about his expected minutes. Um, and I got to chuckle about the price tags here with Schroeder. It's almost like they're going to, we got to wait and see, will they ever price Schroeder more than the King? Right now on <laughs> FanDuel, he, Schroeder's up to 7,900. LeBron is, is is at 9,900. Sometimes it's kind of funny when they huh. they take these guys who are out for an extended period of time and they either leave their price or they drop them way down. They're, so far, they're, they're keeping the respect for LeBron at 99. But Schroeder, right on his tails with this opportunity at, at 7,900, but... Yeah, Crazy. with with those uh, higher price tags for the Lakers guys, uh, this is not the time in my mind to play them. So Drummond or pass for me at this point in the day. And we go to the last game of the night, the Bulls and the Suns. The other 10 o'clock tip, 221.5 total. Phoenix favored by seven, coming off a seven-point win last night. And, you know, it's a decent scenario here. With Phoenix, because it's a pace up for them, Chicago is eighth, and they're just average defensively. But it is a back-to-back. And then with the question marks on Chicago, Levine, you know, he's got the questionable questionable tag. He's played every game this year for Chicago, so we don't know how things will go if he sits. Will Phoenix potentially blow them out? You know, if, if Levine plays... I probably won't go to any of these guards for Chicago, although Sadoransky is a nice price. So if Levine is out, I think you could look at Sadoransky. Or how about Patrick Williams, guy that I don't really like playing because of his inconsistency, but he's really, really cheap. 4136 on FanDuel. That's I cheap mean, if for Le- a guy that gets the minutes that he does. Yeah, you know? and if Levine is out, he should get a couple more shots. So I like... Yeah. Patrick Williams is a potential value play here. The other guys who might start, I mean, this is, you know, interesting to me. If Levine sits and Kobe White's questionable also, who do right. they start? Because Garrett Temple is doubtful. Is it yeah. Tro- Troy Brown Jr., their new acquisition, who just got 17 minutes? He's minimum price on both sites. Or is it Denzel Valentine, who's coming off a, a DNP CD? He's, yeah. he's minimum price on, on FanDuel. So you could look at one of those guys, especially in the late slate, the after-hour slate, but I don't think you have to on the main slate. You can go to Patrick Williams at a really good price. And then with Phoenix, you know, either of those key guards could pay off, but they're they're pretty pricey on a 10-game slate. Um, Got to mention Torrey Craig. He hit 7x value again on DraftKings. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. You know, he's still cheap over there. Sarich is cheap. Uh, but he's only a center eligible on DraftKings, so yeah. probably probably out of the mix for me. Vucevic, um, if Levine is out, does he get all the shots and pay off potentially? But for me, it's probably just plug in uh, a value play like Patrick Williams, and that's it. Yeah, nothing on the Phoenix side. Probably not. No. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not crazy about this game either. I, I will say. I like Sadoransky if Levine sits. I think he'll get the majority of everything at guard. And I've got a hunch, you know, it seems like Valentine's a little bit in the doghouse. I'm thinking maybe Archie Diacono might get a little uh, little spin here. But they do have some guards. So, uh, you know, that's interesting. I'm not ready to, to bite the bullet on Vuk yet. He's just, I mean, he's only been there a couple games. But I don't think they've gotten it figured out where he needs the ball. He runs... He's best when he gets the ball at the top of the key like like the Joker and, and can see the floor, make some decisions, either shoot the three or drive. Um, and I, they seem to be putting him at the block initially all the time. So I think there's a lot of adjustments that need to be made. Uh, I think Donovan's a good coach, and they'll, they'll adjust. 
But, you know, it's, give them 10 games together, I think, and, and you'll see a lot better improvement. Levine doesn't look right, so I'm definitely not interested there at all. I do think Phoenix is primed to smack Chicago around. Chicago's on a uh, road trip, and, uh, you know, that concerns me. I think that, uh, you know, I guys come through for me last night. Crowder was a stud, but, and, you know, McCall Bridges is playing decent. Um, you know, I'm not an eight and believer and then Booker and Paul are always solid, but the price is not there for a game that could be, you know, a 15 point game and, and maybe you're not getting that lightly push. So, uh, I need the Levine news to, and see who they're starting or get an idea. I think it could be a sneaky game for the after hours, but I don't see enough bite in this game to affect the main slate very much. I may put a, a Sadoransky spot if in DraftKings uh, and Yahoo as a the utility spot so that if if Levine's put in I can have you know all four teams in the late spot uh, and to rotate to tons of guys because there are guys you know that fit that mold of McAlbridges and Crowders and and Patrick Williams that we can make some some things work there so uh, I'll be planning on on that like we did last night for those late swaps. But other than that, uh, this is not a feature game for me. Excellent. Well, hope you all enjoyed the breakdown here of this 10-game slate. Uh, if you like what you're looking at here, then uh, please hit that subscribe button on YouTube and, and thumbs up wherever you're listening. We certainly appreciate all that support. And we'll be back again tomorrow for the next slate, as we always do, seven days a week here at, at DFS Coach Talk with the NBA. So, Thank you so much for tuning in. On behalf of the coach and the rest of the DFS Coach Talk team, I'm Andrew Hansen. We'll see you tomorrow as we look to crush it in DFS.